Here's a quick and easy way that we can put a background in for flowers. Say we're going to use, I just got some photos here, uh, a very simple lily like this and we want an interesting background or something like a calla lily or this. It doesn't matter. The background we want to be kind of faded out and not obtrusive to the flower. So let's try that approach. I am going to draw a quick little drawing of a flower just to give me some idea where I'm going to go with it and this will help me I know you can't see it because the um, pencil is so light and I do that on purpose so that it doesn't show up a lot under the painting the center of the flower is here petals need to be coming out from that all my petals need to come back into the center of the flower. They're getting bigger as they go around. Let's bring those back in a little bit. Don't want them that large. Another one over here. And another one over here. This one needs to be a little larger. All right, it just gives me a general idea of where I want that flower to go. I'm going to get my large flat brush, dampen it. I'm going to take my spray water, damping the, dampen the mixing area on my palette. And since there's going to be a little blue in the flower, I want to not get too much blue in my background. I want it to set back. We'll have green because it is growing and there are some leaves back there. Mix up, trying to get rid of those, trying to dissolve those particles. We need some color. The color in the flower is going to be, I am going to bring in some blue. It needs some depth. Perhaps it's getting to be a good color. And this is where we check the amount of water and color that we have in our brush as we're ready to go. You want a good amount of paint ready to be used on your palette so it will go quickly and smoothly. Now we're just going to take this corner of our brush and follow along the edge of our pencil line that we've drawn. Now we do need to move quickly because it's going to dry quickly and we don't want our leading outside edge to dry. We do want this edge near the petals to be nice and crisp, but we don't want this outside. I'm going to stop the painting right there. Bring it over, again around the petal, twist the brush to follow the petal. Keep this wet, strong, good amount of color. Okay, bring this in this way here. Drop in some strong color and spots. I just lost the shape of that petal. This one's a little too large. I'm going to bring that in a little bit. And now while it's still quite wet, huh, interesting. It's dry in a couple spots. Set my brush down, give it a quick spritz. I'm going to try spritzing it with some alcohol. with some water because they re each react differently with the paint. Then I'm going to take my plastic wrap and place it on the wet paint. And you can see my piece of plastic wrap is not quite big enough, but I can press that down, move it around a little bit, and try to keep the edges sharp near the petals. I'm just adding some texture out here because the where the plastic wrap is is not going to affect out here obviously. Now we wait. 
You just have to wait. Now we're ready to see how this flower is doing. It's you to check to see if it's fairly dry under the plastic. You want to that's too wet up there, but down here, if I lift this, you can see that this darker paint area doesn't really move. And look at that. It's ready to go. So lift carefully, double checking to be sure each area is dry as you remove the plastic. I know up top there it's going to blend a little bit because it's still wet. But, ta-da! There is a nice general background for my flower. I don't have to worry a lot about creating a lot of different lines and textures. It's basically already been done for me. It's great. I love this. I've known this technique for years. I thought it was like a big secret. It's not a big secret. I am going to try to find a line that could be where the stem is. Now this is a, a lily, so I know they grow on very strong stalks. So I want to put that in somewhere. Like this. Add a little shading toward the top where it goes in behind the petals. I can also very lightly lift a little of the paint so I have a damp brush that's acting like a sponge and it's just kind of lifting. I'm going to soften it a little more what's underneath and it's going to lift some of the paint. Get a little more green in there. Yeah. That's wet so it's going to spread a little bit. I don't have to worry. If you like, you can also come in and see how this looks like a little stalk over here. Maybe emphasize by following some of those natural shapes that the practice pla <laughs> plastic is made. That looks like a leaf there. That's nice. This is a little dark. I just want to blend that in a little bit. Perhaps come around here and there. Anyway, I'm not going to fiddle with the background too much. You could, if you wanted, to pick out a few more details, but I also want to finish the flower. And to do that, I am going to take my flat wash brush clean it out as best I can. I am going to dampen a spot on my palette and clean a little spot here. I don't always take up all the paint. As I said earlier, I can use it to mix in some nice grays, but every now and then I need a clean spot on my palette. That's just a paper towel. Take my wide wash brush get some water down there. Look at that, it's not clean. Which means I need to go get clean water. I'm back. Still not clean water in my brush. Means there's paint in my brush. So inside my cup here, I am really working the brush like this down at the base, trying to clean out some of that, whatever's in there. It looks cleaner clean spot on my palette. Let me check this again. Still some sort of red in my brush. That won't be too bad because I'm going to use a blue and it's going to make a very soft purple. If you look back at my photo, you can see I've got some blues and purples in the petals that I want to pull out. I'm not going into super detail here, just enough to give you an idea how to do it there. Now we have a clean brush. I get some water down here. A little hint of ultramarine blue. To do this, I am just touching the very corner of that brush into that blue, just to pick up a little bit. Put it off to the side. It's still corner loaded. Some water in the other corner. So this brush has blue down here and water here. See if I just touch to my palette, I can see that. 
decide where I want the shadows are going to come out of the center of the flower. Here. Here again. A little bit. Here. I have to watch that green because that's wet. I twist the brush to get change in the direction of these shadows. They're just a very gentle shadow in the petal. I'm going to clean my brush again and I just want to have some clear water in it to blend the leading edge of that blue. That one I want sharp. I want to do something with this one. This one's going to be in a little more shadow here. And see how just easily it's put in there. Now my petals have a little more shape. I wait for that to dry and then I can settle in with some stamen and pistils. I've also noticed there's a little reflected pinkish light in there, very, very light. So I'm going to add a little more water to that, and I'm just going to drop it in where it's still somewhat damp on the petal. And this is going to add more interest, just a little hint of it here and there. <laughs> now I know why Bob Ross talked the way he did. Just a little hint. It's because you're focusing so much on what you're doing. All right, I think I'm going to wait for that to dry. I've tried to keep some lights toward where the, uh, the light is coming from, so the higher lights up on the tip tops of this, these petals. I might even take a clean paper, find a clean spot on my paper towel, dab that a little bit. I need for it to dry. I want to pick up some more of this stem. Just a little bit there. And now I've lost some of the depth of it, so I'm going to add some color back in in another spot. Keep that lighter area there. But over here, add some more green. As we know, there is yellow and green, so I'm going to pick up some yellow. Check how much. Drop it into that area. That'll warm it up, bring it forward, make it stand out from the background a little more. Check how damp. I'll be coming back to that. Let's finish up this little flower. If I look at the photo again, and I'm just using it as a guide, I see that it kind of yellow on the pestles and the stamen comes up the middle more of a green and the pestles have little um, red pollen spots on them. So I'm going to go more with a, let's get some yellow first. Here. Whoa! I've got some green here already, that'll bring it down a little bit, not so bright. I'm just going to touch thinking of where the center of the flower is right there and touch where some of these are going to come out. Irregular. Things in nature are irregular. If you make them too regular, they're not going to look real. Clean the brush. Get a good amount of that water out of there. It's still damp, but it's not wet. I'm going to get my other round brush here. Pick up some of that strong yellow. Maybe drop that right in the center. And on the outer edge, edge, <laughs> the outer edge. We're going to use that 
the little pollen areas. Just touching the tip of my brush. To the paper. There are some very subtle lines on here if you wanted to pursue that. Very quite, it's a damp brush, not too much paint in it, and you can brace your hand and have some of those lines coming along like that. Don't spell them all out. Give the viewer an indication that they're there and they can, the subconscious will finish them. I want something in the middle of that flower. I need a little pizzazz right there. Is that pizzazz? Let's see. Boom. I think, oh, I like that. I'm going to touch a little bit on a couple of the other spots. Better planned, better, you know, think about it. Planted ahead. I did this very quickly and almost intuitively, so it's not the best flower, but you get the idea of the loose foliage around the edge and how to do a soft blend in the petals here, that blue into the white, just a, a hint at shadow. And you can come back in bit by bit and adjust some of the details. But don't fiddle with it too much. Just don't want to do that. Okay. Try some of these out. Have fun. Go ahead. Enjoy painting. <laughs>